After breaking Florence's 24-hour speed record as we sailed down South Africa's wild coast in the previous episode, we now find ourselves holed up in the port of East London, hiding from bad weather as we plan the next leg of our journey to Cape Town. We're now only 400 miles away from a major milestone in our voyage around the world, rounding the southernmost tip of Africa. An area known for its fierce wind, strong currents and fearsome waves. Get our timings wrong on this coast and we could face dangerous ship-breaking seas. Get it right and we could be in for the ride of our lives. We are Matt and Amy. We left England in 2016 on a mission to sail around the world. Just the two of us on our 37 foot sailboat Florence. Five years on we have sailed over 35,000 miles across three oceans, exploring new countries and cultures along the way. We are very glad to be in here, tied up against the dock in a sheltered port right now. The wind is howling through the rigging and it's been like this for a couple of days now. The wind is actually blowing in the right direction to take us on from here in East London on towards Cape Town. But it's so strong, the gusts are forecast to be well into the 40s. And even here in this sheltered port, we're bouncing around against the dock, and, but uh, nothing compared to what it would be outside the breakwater. And we're trying to work out when we can actually sail on towards Cape Town. We only have so long on our visas and we have to get to Cape Town so that we can do some work there and then check out to sail across the South Atlantic. Uh, the weather on this coast is really volatile. So you look at the weather forecast and a week in advance, it looked like there was a really good weather window coming. And we were really kind of excited, even just yesterday, excited to be leaving in a couple of days. But now the forecast has just changed. We've got to do just over 500 miles. So we need really a four day weather window in order to do that. Uh, most of the weather windows have been a little bit shorter. At the moment, it looks like the weather window is long enough. It's just that the winds are so strong, even though they're blowing us in the right direction. We just don't want to be out there when we're gusting well over 40 knots on the forecast. I think here in East London, uh, this has been the warmest welcome we've received in any yacht club we've ever been to around the world. Everybody's been so friendly, inviting us to brides. They've got the most amazing bride fit here and everyone's just been so helpful, lending us a car to go for a look around, taking us up to the shops to do some shopping up the road. Yeah, it's been a really, really friendly experience. So although we're stuck here because of the bad weather, it's not a bad place to be stuck. We're both feeling very apprehensive over this next section. It's potentially one of the most challenging passages of our entire circumnavigation. We've got three friends who've already made it to Cape Town ahead of us and all of them faced about 50 knots of wind and big seas. So we're making sure that we get our planning right. There are four factors that make this stretch of coastline particularly difficult to sail down. The first is the lack of safe harbours. From here to Cape Town, we only have four potential places that we can stop and wait for better weather. So we have to make sure that we have all the information about them written down in case we have to stop in an emergency. Things like waypoints for entering the harbour, tight times, and VHF channels that are used by the harbour master. The closest harbour is Port Elizabeth, and that is the only place where we're guaranteed to have space for us to be able to stop. But that's only 130 miles further down the coast from here, so we're really hoping to be able to carry on past. St Francis is the next port, but it's a tiny harbour, and it only has one marina, which is quite expensive. And it's also very difficult to get into in bad weather, so it's not going to be an ideal place to stop. After that, we have Neisner, which is by all accounts an absolutely beautiful place to stop. Unfortunately, it's also got one of the most 
dangerous and fearsome entrances where you have to go in through a really narrow, shallow gap between two headlands. And unless you've got the weather just right when you come to do that, it could be too dangerous to carry on and sail in there. So that's not really an option either. The last option to stop before rounding the capes is at Mossel Bay. It's about 120 miles from there to Cape Agulhas and 200 miles all the way around to the Cape of Storms. So as we are passing Mossel Bay, we're going to have to download the latest weather files and make a go, no go decision. Either we stop and wait for better weather or we have to carry on all the way round. We are then committed. The second factor is the Agulhas current, which is a major feature of sailing down this coast. We've spoken about it more in previous videos, but essentially it's a conveyor belt of water that's flowing down the coast, and if we get a strong southerly wind that blows against the current, it can create really steep seas, uh, ship-breaking seas, so we really need to avoid that. The third factor that makes this section so difficult is the local weather patterns. The weather pattern in South Africa changes every three to five days, as fronts move across the continent from the Southern Ocean. So there's no guarantee that the weather that is forecast at the Capes when we leave will be what we actually get. That makes planning difficult and is why we carefully research the few harbours where we can stop in case we have to seek shelter. And the fourth factor is acceleration at the Capes. Once we're out of that strong Agulhas current, we then have to pass two major capes. Cape Agulhas, which is the southernmost point of Africa, and Cape of Good Hope, which is also known as the Cape of Storms. These capes can significantly accelerate the wind and build up the sea state. Many ships have been wrecked in this area. Sailors are not advised to pass by in bad weather. However, finding a good weather window can be tough. Finally, after waiting here for 11 days, it looks like we have an acceptable weather window. Although it's still forecast to be gusting 36 knots at the Cape, so Matt's preparing the storm jib just in case. We're still torn as to whether or not we should be leaving, especially as we've been made to feel so at home here in East London. We plan to leave at dawn and make the final call on the weather in the morning. Well, it is a lot calmer this morning. It's uh, half past four and it's time to go, I think. Hopefully it won't be crazy out there like it was yesterday. So it's much calmer out here than we thought it would be. Uh, we've got about 15 to 18 knots of wind at the moment and the sea state is much calmer than we thought. When we looked out from the land yesterday, it was just like complete sea of white caps out here. Uh, it is gonna pick up as the day goes on. It's only about half past six in the morning now and it tends to die down at uh, overnight and early mornings, which was good for getting out of the port and around the breakwater before the waves picked up. So I suspect we'll be taking this mainsail down before too long in the day but at the moment we need it to keep us moving and get us out to the current which is running offshore so we're just heading about four or five miles offshore to pick up a little bit more helpful current help us on our way and then we'll bear off probably put the pole out and then roll our way towards Cape Town. One of the things that's different for us about this passage is I'm wearing shoes which is a very unusual thing on Florence because normally it's so warm and toasty that we don't need them, but here it's actually pretty cold. So we've got shoes and socks on for the first time in a long time. And blankets, we definitely need more blankets. Well, it's not been as bad as we thought it'd be today. Apart from being a bit cold, I've got two pairs of trousers on, thick socks and a couple of jumpers, but the breeze hasn't been as bad and the sea state has been nowhere near as bad as we were expecting. So we're making really good progress. We're in the Agulhas current, so we're doing nine or ten knots. Uh, that'll be with us for another hundred miles, I think. But uh, all good on board Florence. Although the sea state was not as bad as we expected, we were still getting thrown around a fair bit and I was glad to have been able to buy some convenient food. 
It felt so good to be flying along at 10 knots with the smell of a hot lasagna drifting out of the galley oven. A perfect warming passage meal. It's been three years since we had access to such fresh, convenient, ready-made meals. The sailing might be challenging in South Africa, but the living is certainly easy. Well, the breeze has really kicked in today, which is much more what we were expecting to see. Uh, and the sea state's got a lot rougher too, but it's not too bad. Um, and we've had a really careful look at the forecast this morning. The forecast for, that we're worried about is for when we get to Cape Agulhas and Cape of Good Hope much further on. But this is the point where we need to decide. We're going past the last place we can pull in and stop. And we either pull in and stop here and wait for better weather further on, or we decide to go on. And we decided to go on. Uh, the weather further on, it's not. It's not ideal, it's still going to be gusting 36 knots, but we decided that that's going to be manageable, and so we're carrying on. Unfortunately, though, we've got in front of us now, although we're in the offshore and in the middle of the sea, uh, there's always something that pops up exactly where you want to go, and there's a shipping separation scheme around some oil rigs just up ahead, so we're actually going to have to put a couple of jibes in to duck around them. Okay, ready for go? Yeah. Here you go and sort out the preventer. Let's try it Ready? After altering course to dodge the drilling platform and pass a ship with more room, we were able to set the pole on the other side. Ships appear very quickly when we're doing 10 knots and they're coming in the opposite direction at 12 knots. With the high volume of shipping here, we had to do a lot more work to maintain a safe distance from them. But the sailing was awesome and we were making rapid progress towards Cape Agulhas. As we squeezed around the top of the shipping separation scheme, we met with a lot of ships, all doing the same thing. This is a massive concentration point for all of the shipping passing between the Indian and Atlantic Ocean without using the Suez Canal. By the morning of day three, we were well into our offshore routine. One sailing, one sleeping, and the weather was making for some fast progress. But the question was, would we be fast enough? If possible, we wanted to pass Cape Agulhas in daylight so that we could see it and celebrate the momentous milestone in our voyage around the world. However, it was going to be touch and go whether we beat the sunset to the Cape or not. It seemed Florence was keen to see the Cape too, as she ploughed along at great pace. in the Indian Ocean, just approaching the Atlantic. Yeah, Cape Agulhas is just on the starboard side and that is where the Atlantic and the Indian Oceans meet 
and we're about to sail back into the Atlantic and it's been four years and eight months since we last sailed in the Atlantic Ocean. That's when we left through the Panama Canal and into the Pacific. Yeah. Yeah, we were worried we weren't going to get here before it got dark and we're just here just in time, just as the sun started to go down and we get to see the cape as we go past. It's pretty iconic. We've been building up to this point for a very, very long time now, but I certainly didn't think that we'd be sailing past uh, the Cape with full sails up, <laughs> wing on wing. And uh, the storm jib's still ready on the bow, which we got ready at the start of this leg. Um, expecting it to be big waves and big wind as it's fearsome this coast, it's really known for the bad weather. Um, but so far, it's so good. We've got one more night to go and it is supposed to be more breezy tonight, 36 knot gusts. But Yeah, all of tomorrow is forecast to be really windy, yeah. so we're not there yet, but we're getting very close. Very close. This is probably the longest that we've actually both been on deck together for the entire passage this time. We've both just been switching between watches, haven't we? And Sleeping. As soon as, as soon as one of us has got out of the bunk, the other one's got back in it. It's been so cold and... Um, oh yeah, it's warmed up now though. Yeah. I thought it would be cold tonight. The very last of our Indonesian rum to toast the Indian Ocean and Cape Bagulas. Cheers! Cheers! To Cape Agulhas! Cape Agulhas and the southernmost point in Africa. Ha <laughs> ha! This is quite exciting! <laughs> it's quite a momentous achievement! Actually passing Cape Agulhas on our own boat. To making it through all three of the oceans of the world with my favourite person. Oh. <laughs> well such done, a Florence. beautiful day as well. Well done Florence. Yeah. Oh brilliant. And at sunset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cheers Neptune, another ocean. Yeah, cheers to Neptune, thank you very much. And to many more. <laughs> well, how many more? <laughs> cheers Neptune, thank you for letting us safely pass through three oceans. That's the Atlantic, the Pacific and now the Indian Ocean. And please can we also safely pass the Atlantic again back home to England. And maybe a few more oceans in the future. Cheers Neptune. Oh, we should drink rum on passage more often. I feel more alive than I have for the last three days. <laughs> oh yeah, it's after day three as well. We're starting to feel more yeah. alive, more awake. Oh, wow. So we've made it into the Atlantic Ocean, but Mother Nature still has a sting in the tail for us. We still have to pass the Cape of Storms, and that Cape will not let us pass so easily. Well, We've done Cape Lagunas and now we've got the Cape of Good Hope which is also known as the Cape of Storms. It looks like we're going to get a bit of a sting in the tail. We've got the wind is blowing straight up from the south, from the southeast, off the Antarctic. It's fucking freezing. We are wearing all the clothes that we have and uh, it looks like we're going to get blown past this cape pretty quickly. We knew the wind and sea state was going to build as we approached the cape. So we'd already put all three reefs into the mainsail in the pre-dawn darkness, meaning that we were well prepared at this point. We don't often sail in these conditions, but we found it exhilarating to be rocketing downwind towards such an iconic landmark. Cape of Good Hope or the Cape of Storms is just appearing out of the mist. It's so much more dramatic than Cape of Gulas. It's amazing, it's like out of a movie. And we've got the wind and the waves to go with it. As the wind increased, it was time to drop the mainsail. As we need to make a potentially dangerous turn into the wind and waves to do this, it is always best done sooner rather than later.
Indian Ocean, I guess, has the fiercest reputation of any of the oceans that have been part of our circumnavigation so far. And it feels feels really good to have it the end of that in sight and potentially some more straightforward sailing uh, on the horizon because these last few months we've just been constantly looking at the weather and watching the weather and, and trying to choose the best gap to, to make it as safely as possible down this coastline all the way from Seychelles really. Just in case the waves are getting pretty big. Blocking the companionway hatch with the washboards will hopefully stop any of these building waves from getting inside the boat if they do break into the cockpit. Neither of us wanted to go down below to rest as we were both enjoying the experience of sailing in the wild conditions past this famous cape. We felt safe in the knowledge that we did not have far to go before we could rest in a safe harbour. Well this is the 35 knots that was forecast and this area, this cape, is the one that we feared the most out of the passage. And Given its reputation and, and what we heard about it, we thought this was going to be an awful part of the trip. But it's actually the best bit, it's the most fun that we've had sailing in a long time. This is awesome. It's not only fine, this weather, it's, it's actually enjoyable. We're having a good time. We are flying and we've yeah. got an awesome view and we're in an awesome place. Yeah, and it feels more... I guess it feels more real to be sailing around the Cape with wind and waves than it would if it was a black car. <laughs> the wind and waves continued to build, it was finally time to hoist that storm jib that had been sat on the deck ready since the start of the passage. This weather is quite normal here. If there isn't a storm rolling in, it's likely that the catabatic winds will be howling down the mountains. Our choice of storm jib proved to be the right one, as the wind climbed well into the 40s. And even just with this tiny sail, Florence was rocketing along at six or seven knots. We flew past the Cape and into Hout Bay, where the sea stayed calmed, but the wind increased even further as we closed in on the harbour. Ah. Hout Bay is an absolutely stunning place to sail into. Surrounded by mountainous peaks up to 1,000 metres in height, the view is breathtaking. This is going to be our home for a while, as it's A, much cheaper than the central Cape Town marinas, and B, much closer to nature and the hiking trails on those magnificent peaks that we hope to explore. It was so windy that we actually dropped the storm jib and entered the harbour under bare poles with the engine running in neutral, ready to put it in reverse if we need it to slow down. This is quite a change from the hot, windless doldrums of Indonesia that we were in just six months ago. And here is a different side to the Cape of Storms. It's a huge relief to be here in Cape Town, having safely arrived without breaking anything. 
We had an incredible sale, an incredible arrival. We feel on top of the world. On a much calmer day, we left Florence safely moored in Hout Bay Marina and set out on a sailor's pilgrimage. We headed to Cape Point with friends from three other boats who we'd first met in Seychelles. Rounding the Capes of South Africa is one of the most challenging parts of a sailing circumnavigation, and we were all celebrating the achievement of successfully crossing out of the Indian Ocean and into the Atlantic. So this is Cape Point from the opposite direction on a completely different day. It is so calm today, it's beautiful. I mean, when we were coming past here, we were, I think we dropped the mainsail just off of here, and then we were like rocketing past here at seven knots or nine knots with just the storm jib up. It's a really iconic place. Although we all arrived safely, not one of us had an easy passage and we were all grateful to be moving on to theoretically easier seas. Watching a seal surfing in the waves, we all agreed that this sailor's pilgrimage was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Not because we didn't wish to sail past the Cape again, but because it cost 380 Rand per person, or 2,660 Rand for the seven of us to get into Cape Point National Park for the day. We can't wait to show you around our new home near Cape Town. We believe there is nowhere on earth quite like it. If it wasn't for the draw of the South Atlantic, the final ocean crossing before we have sailed a full circle around the world, we might never leave. Next time, we'll share with you some of why we love this part of South Africa and the Cape Peninsula. Don't forget to subscribe to catch the next episode. We release a video every two weeks. If you'd like to find out more about behind the scenes on Florence, track our progress across the oceans in real time, find out where we are right now, or ask us pretty much anything, then please head over to our Patreon site and join the crew. We'd like to thank everyone who supports us to make these videos possible. And a special thank you to our star patrons. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't know what it is about them, they're just... I love them! <laughs>